2015, the 23rd of March 2015. Right, I was called by the, the, the guys on them who worked for me, who worked the fishing vessels on them for me, and I was also a fish vendor. I used to market my own fish. So the guys on them came from the sea, and they, they, they called me and told me what they came. So I left home, and I went to the fishing quarter to collect the fish and pay the guys on them. After a while, I was preparing to go to the fish market. A guy woke up behind me and kept struck me on my head. So when when actually I turned around, it was someone I see and I knew before coming by my business place to purchase stuff. And he pointed a gun at my face and he told me, he said, hey, pass the money. So, but, but basically I did nearly purchase, nearly finished purchase fish. So I had something like, like about four thousand dollars cash on me, so I had the money in my right pocket. So while I, I, I actually go in the pocket to give him the money, he he, he shot me on the upper part, of the inside of my right leg. The bullet entered it entered my my gland, and it goes every gland in my right leg. So when when I got shot, I ended up falling to the ground. He came over me, and he take his foot and he mashed me behind my head. And he told me, they sent him for me because I have been too much. And well, with that, I started up, I started up, I started to throw up. For me, started to come through my nose, through my mouth. You know, I was in great pain. Great, great, great pain. And he took the gun and he pointed at my head. And he said, hey, you're going home tonight. And well, with that, I just closed my eye and Say, Lord Father, everything is up to you. And with that, I, I kind of went, went in a little, in a little doze, a little sleep, and then I heard a gunshot again. With that kind of way, no, wake me up. When I woke my eye, it was a neighbor of mine standing right at the side of me and going, "Oh gosh, they didn't bump to shoot me, but and you know, with that, a neighbor of mine came with his car." And they took me up from on the ground. They called the mayor of police and told them about the shooting what just took place. It had, it, it had a patroller who was on the beach about 10 minutes before the shooting took place. And they left and went to Aguaya to a ferry and circular. And when they, 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 they called the police, they called the mayor of station and told them about the incident. They never called the patrol. They, they choose to leave me our station to come to Guaya on the fish boat to see what happened. Where they, they meet us on the roadway was Labrie Village heading to Miaro Hospital. When we reached the Miaro Hospital and they prepare my leg and they prepare me for transport to go to San Fernando General Hospital. The, the, the patrol came in the hospital compound and one of the officers asked me if I saw the person face who did this to me. I said, yeah, he didn't have on the mask. He used to come by my business place. And with that, well, the umbrella, we left to go to San Fernando. My daughter, police escort, just me, the driver, a nurse, and a neighbor went with me. Just four of us alone. And when I reached the San Fernando hospital about four o'clock in the morning, I was, I was in, in, in doors, I was in shock. Right? And, I said that thing was fading away. And they took me to the theater and that was the last thing I remember. When I well when I actually catch myself, it was I think Wednesday afternoon, about three o'clock, because I saw my kids and my family standing up at the side of the bed. The 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 the, the, the doctor came to look for me and he told me um, a little problem because when he feel my leg the temperature what he was feeling he said that not normal the leg ain't supposed to feel that temperature so he borrowed a pin from my nurse and he stuck my side of me too and he, you know he asked me how it felt i said doc it's feeling away i barely feeling it he said you sure i said yeah doc he said close your eye so i, I closed my eye he stick me again and the feeling was the same so I told him what happened and thing, and he told me, it's either I leave him to do what he has to do, or he will remove my leg. So I went ahead and I told him, I said, I don't care, 
this car, I don't care. All I want is my leg. So he, he called an ex-doctor. Excuse me. I don't really like to speak about this. But he called an ex-doctor and he told the doctor to bring a, 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 a surgery tray to Ward 7 extension in at the San Fernando General Hospital. Where they, um, they did a surgery to my calves, both sides to my calves. So he, he called he call another doctor and told the doctor to bring a, a tray, a surgery tray up to Ward 7 extension for him. So when he did that, he, he told me to tell my family all they need to go for me. And he told me to tell me, he said, Mr. Lane, perform a surgery on the leg without giving him any painkillers because the amount of painkillers we give him while he was in the theater if we give him any more we might stop the heart from beating then we have problems so he told me buy the blanket and enjoy the pain which I felt pain where like never felt before in life and they actually went ahead and I soak my calves and straighten my leg like this. He told me, well, if this, if this didn't work, the next morning he will have to remove my leg. And which, what bless me, well, the leg is here with me today. But um, I didn't get a chance to tell Dr. Narayan Singh, thank you for everything they do for me. Thanks very much. Thank you, Doc. And well, after that, on the Fourth day, uh, so the nurse, the nurse in charge of the ward, she she came to me and she told me, she said, Mr. Ling, we um, we have a little problem. So I said, Well, what was the problem? She said, Mr. Ling, you do not have a police report in, in your medical fight. We we'll have to put you out of the ward because you cannot be here with a gunshot wound, with no medical report, with no police report, and you didn't have a police escort. So we did not know had a choice more than to put you out of the hospital. So she went ahead and she spoke to the doctor and the doctor said, said to her, don't put them up. Call San Fernando police and let them call me at station and tell them that I have a guy here without a police report. So when the officer came, he remember that fully well, it was a Sunday. And he came to took the report for me. And he wanted me to sign a blank sheet of paper and tell me when he reached the station, he will do the report. So I had to tell him, I signed it on Captain Bar. You need to write the report here and let me read it first before I sign the anything. And well, he just, he just on a report, but he said, this is scrap. So when he reached the station, he will do it over. And well, he took the report and then that was the Sunday, right? And I went ahead and I did, I had a surgery on the leg to save the leg. And uh, I spent 19 days at the San Fernando General Hospital. When I was discharged from the hospital, I came home. I was discharged from the hospital. I came home and I went to the Miaro police station to find out, well, you know, to get a little update at the investigation and what was taking place. And, and I was confronted by one of the officers, which is a uh, Maharaj, he, at the time he was the warrant man in Miaro. And he started to use obscene language and tell me come on the station, I life in your blood, and the case closed. So I, I was like, I was in a little shop. So I stand up and I look at him. I say, my case closed. He say, your effing case closed, come out of here, you like life in your blood, you're from here, and you're a nasty man. So like, well, I said, well, I just think something wrong here, because I have relative who is police and thing, and when I explained to them what took place and how the officer treatment, they told me to go to the higher authority. So, okay, I went to the, the, the head station for this division, which is Sandy Grande Police Station, and I went to see the senior superintendent who was in charge at the time, the general commanded him, Mr. Carl Nelson. And it took me a while before I could ask him. But when I get to see him and thing, we had a we had a verbal discussion and thing, and he used, he started to tell me, well, these guys will never do nothing like that. And we had a, a, a 
discussion and I, I told them what the officer told me. So he sent downstairs to get the file by a, a he, he sent a female inspector to get the file. When she when she came back with the file, she started to go through the file and thing and she you know he was he was talking to me and thing and she she says so sorry to disturb you and he asked her what is that? And she turned and she told him, she says so this case closed. He said what? She says so this this case closed in 14 days. So it the case didn't close while I was still in hospital. So all of that convinced me like these fellas and them know something about it. I was to get shot. Because who oh, you could close that case while there's someone still at the hospital. I supposed to die. So it leave me a kind of way in shock. So I turn and I ask the superintendent now, I say, so where are we going with this from here? And he 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 gives me a piece of yellow paper with his number on it and he call her a sergeant named Sergeant Paul. Moving Paul is the, is the, the guy name. And told him, go downstairs and reopen this case. And we went downstairs and he did a three, three pages report. And after he did it, I turned and I asked him, I said, so I don't have to sign this report here. Nah, you don't have to sign this. So I tried calling the superintendent Nelson that morning and telling him about what, what actually taking place something and, and he told me the morning I called him he told me he was driving to give him at least 10 minutes he nearly reached the work so I said no problem sir so I called him back about a half an hour after and the way that guy started get on with me and started the dance and of course and carry on and, and tell me don't call the phone and, and I hamburger him and he yeah, what to do and I say you see this don't try to get on any of these people's skin, they will get rid of you. So I went ahead there and then now and went to the complaint authority, the police complaint authority, and filed a report. Which the, which the took five years to tell me what I brought about on the officers and them was allegation. So I asked one of the investigating officers, which is V Rampasad. Vishnu Rampasad is his name. Well, what really going on with the investigation and thing? I only got to understand, he told me, they had to close the investigation. Lacking of evidence. I say, how come lacking of evidence? I say, they don't have no report of the shooting. In that talk, he said, Mr. Ling, it's not so easy, this thing is go. I say, well, explain it to me. He said, Mr. Ling, the majority of these guys and them who was involved, in, 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 in your incident, resign. I said, so, how come they resign now? He said, Mr. Ali, we see police complaint authority. When these fellas and them resign and go home, they have nothing we could do about it. I said, what do you mean? Under what law and what act of this country, these fellas and them wrong when they resign does come right? I would like to know because first time I hear in this, like, I, like it, it, it's a shock to me. He turned around and he told me, he said, Mr. Ling, what you want me to do? This is true, you know. This is how, how the things work here, you know. So I like, I was in a shock. So I I, 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 I went ahead and put up an article on news day, which was the article was on Sunday the 18th. Sunday the 18th. So I went ahead and, and put up an article in, in, in the news day on the article was on the 18th of uh, July 21 on page 10 where I take the matter to the DPP. Right? So I went ahead and I wrote Mr. Mr. Rodriguez for the DPP a letter telling them about the ruling that the police complaint authority made. So when, when I went to him and I told him about it, he, he personally told me that ruling not good. That which which was which was that, that that was the fourth of August 21, where he told me the ruling wasn't good and, and stuff like that. And me and he had a little a little verbal discussion and I asked him why people in authority in this country do not be all accountable for the action. Why it is people could do this thing and resign and go home and all the wrong become right under what act? Oh, 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 what law are this country? This is available because 
I travel with Allah. I had 21. And I, the first time I see in this, they get this. So he find I was very disrespectful to him by telling him that. And he turned and he insulted me by asking me, if I gave him money, what are you going to do with it? I said, sir, what do you mean by that? Because I was working for my money. I do not have a police conviction. I had my little business and things was going good. So I can't see how you as a DPP could ask me a question like that. So I was, I was, I was in a little maze, I was in a little shock. So I, it take me a little while before I answer. So I look at him, and I look at him good, you know, and I started to question myself and ask myself, will you, will you be treated fairly and just him? So after that, uh, uh, I went ahead and I wrote him a letter which was, I uh, wrote that letter six months after me and he spoke, which was the 21st of February, 22. I asked him about what taking place with, with the matter, which he never answered me. After this, 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 this day, he never replied to my letter. And he told me he power is in his pen. So I got to realize that power in that pen is not for me. I'm not worthy enough for that power. Because of the color of the skin or the texture of my hair. I would, I would like to know why. I would like to know why. Because I did my part for my country by paying taxes to my country and stuff like that. So it was a little amazed to me. So when I see he had replied to me and thing, I went ahead and, and wrote the president a letter telling she about his behavior in office. So she ended up replying to me. She let me know that she do not have jurisdiction over the DPP, but I've been treated unfairly. And she told me she wished me the best by going about to seek justice. I mean, something like that, it's, it's totally unacceptable. That kind of behavior coming from the DPP office and from people in authority in this country, totally, totally unacceptable. I would like someone in the 